Hey, what's going on? Welcome to The Doug Show. My name is Doug Cunnington, and in this episode, I talked to Stephen Keyes, and he and his wife, Lauren, were on an episode a while back, uh, episode 282, and they blog over a trip of a lifestyle. Today, we're going to talk about how they signed up for 40 credit cards, and they ended up making about $20,000 doing it. So we're going to get into all the details, and some people may refer to this as credit card churning which is kind of an interesting topic. We're gonna to go a little meta and talk about the behind the scenes kind of situation with some of these credit card rewards and referrals and stuff like that, which will all make sense in a few minutes. And I, I do wanna point out uh, also that Stephen and Lauren have a blog called Trip of a Lifestyle. And I know a lot of the audience, you listening and you watching, you're, uh, about my age, you're in your 40s, maybe 50s. There's a wide spectrum. But one thing I want to point out is your nieces and nephews or your kids might be interested in Trip of a Lifestyle in that blog because Lauren and Steven retired when they were about 29. So they didn't have huge tech salaries, very modest salaries. And they kind of actually have a roadmap on how someone can do this uh, on the same sort of constraints. So with that being said, let's bring Steven on. How's it going today? Hey, doing well. Thanks for having me on. Of course. It's always a blast to catch up. And on a personal note, uh, you guys have been traveling a bit. You do some road trips. So where was your latest outing? Yeah, uh, we had two in the last like few months, I guess. Our last one was short, I guess, by our definition. Uh, we were out for like two weeks or so uh we drove from florida to las vegas which uh actually i would not recommend doing in like a two-week time span if uh if you have to do that but we decided to anyway because we're weird and uh yeah it's mainly because i was going to go to a very large magic the gathering tournament in las vegas so that was kind of the main purpose of that trip and we got to see some other stuff along the way before that i think like a month before or so we took 51 days and just kind of drove around and hit um, some other places. Montana, we were in Colorado. That's actually when we recorded our last episode with you and uh, did did some other stuff on that trip. That was fun, too. I think I think over the last year, we traveled probably four or five months out of the 12. Very cool. And we won't go too in depth, but I'll just place some teasers out there. So if people want to check out that episode 282, you guys do the van life thing occasionally, but you have uh, like a home, you have a couple houses actually. So you guys are not just like bumming in your van and, and living in there full time. It's just a way that you enjoy traveling. So people could hear about all the details and stuff. And yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I saw the van pretty, pretty minimal, pretty, uh, you know, I guess pragmatic overall. Yeah, I saw I saw a TikTok video the other day that said something like it was it was kind of dissing the fire, the fire movement. It said something like, yeah, well, everyone who does this either has these huge salaries or they live in a van. I was like, well, I mean, OK, technically, that's kind of true since we have the van. But I mean, we do have a house, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, people paint with broad brushes sometimes just to, I, I'm not sure why, but we'll let them do their thing and we'll <laughs> focus on credit card churning today. So what's the general idea with credit card churning? And uh, along the way, you could also tell us uh, a little bit about like how the 20K um, like came about and if it was all sort of like cash back or if it was some redemption uh, situation too. So what's the general idea with credit card churning? Um, so the idea of it is basically that uh, credit card companies are very, very hungry to get new people in deep, high interest debt to them. Um, and so what they do is they send you thousands and thousands of letters in the mail all the time, uh, begging you to sign up for their credit cards. And to do that, they're offering a lot of times intro bonuses. And a lot of times it's just straight up cash. Like you sign up for this card give you $500 cash uh, and you have to usually meet some some minimal requirements to get that um, but yeah they're, they're just begging people to sign up for the cards and they figure if they invest a little money um, to put stars in people's eyes about cash that they're going to get up front then they know on average people are going to spend way too much money on their credit cards 
uh, get deep in debt, not be able to pay it off, and owe them lots and lots of interest and provide tons and tons of revenue for the bank over time. So if you're smart and deliberate and you're, you know, really, uh, I guess, strict and good with your finances, you can uh, take advantage of the bank and their offer uh, by being one of the few people who doesn't get taken advantage of by the offer, right? So if you just sign up for these things, collect those bonuses and pay off all the, the credit card debt that you rack up immediately so you pay zero interest, you're basically just reaping free money. And so if you do that again and again and again with card after card after card, that's called churning because you're churning through a whole bunch of cards, I guess is where the term comes from. And you went through about 40 cards, which sounds like honestly a huge pain in the ass when I think about the paperwork and just keeping track of all the things. How long of a period are we talking about for this uh, 20K that you guys reaped uh, the rewards from? Yeah. So uh, back when I wrote like the article about it, we had hit 40 cards and around $20,000 in uh, rewards from that um, without paying any interest or fees along the way. I think now we've actually slowed down since then on our on our timetable. I think now we're up to like 44 or 45, maybe 46 cards. I, I don't remember the exact number now and some more money on top of that. We keep doing it. We've slowed down a little. But for those first 40, we were going really hard because uh, we were trying to save toward financial independence and we were doing like every single possible side hustle or source of income that we could do. Uh, so we signed up for those 40 credit cards over a period of about seven years. Um, and, you know, a lot of people hear that first number, 40 credit cards, and they're like, you're crazy. Like only an insane person would sign up for 40 credit cards or the bank would never let you sign up for 40 credit cards or whatever. But yeah, when you think about it, it's two people, right? So we were able to split our inquiries among two people over those seven years. And we also ha had a business as well, which was able to sign up for cards under its own tax ID number. So it's almost like three people signing up for 40 cards over the span of seven years. It's actually not that crazy when you think about it um, in terms of how many cards each person, quote unquote, is signing up for each year. Got it. And thinking about those credit report inquiries and other other things that might impact your credit score, which just having additional debt available could. So did this hit your credit score? And is that a thing that you were conscious of while you were going through the process? Yeah, that's a great question. So that's probably like the single most popular question about this whole churning thing is like, will it destroy your credit? Uh, and I can't actually answer that directly for an individual person, but I can tell you what happened to us. Um, so we went into it thinking that like, logically it probably should have a negative impact on your credit. We thought, uh, hard inquiries on your credit score are really bad. Supposedly, uh, we're going to do a whole bunch of them more than is normal. Um, and then supposedly like canceling credit cards which is necessary in this process because most of these cards with really high bonuses also come along with annual fees. Um, so if you, if you pay those annual fees ongoing, it completely negates the benefit of, of the bonuses. So canceling the cards um, is necessary in some cases. And in other cases, you can downgrade the cards. We can talk about that too. But um, canceling cards is supposed to be bad for your credit score as well. And we did a lot of canceling cards. Um, so we went into it. Uh, around age, I don't know, probably 21, 22, something like that, with the idea that it would trash our credit scores. Uh, like that was our expectation is this will not be good for our credit scores. Um, we didn't care um, because we were kind of already at that time of the mindset of like, we are going to save really, really hard, really fast. We're going to save 50 to 85% of our incomes. And we're going to have enough money in the bank that we won't probably need credit. We're going to buy a modest house for cash. We're going to buy our car for cash. We're just not going to take out loans. So loans were kind of never in our life plan. So we don't really care what our credit score was. Um, so for us, the purpose of the credit score was to get sign up bonuses from credit cards, uh, which, which is kind of crazy and unusual. So I will say like disclaimer, right? We went into this with 
the mindset of we're okay with the risk to our credit score. We don't care what happens. Ironically, though, uh, after the end of seven years of doing it, uh, I think both our credit scores had risen from they were they were you know medium okay when we were like back in college or just graduating college. I think they were somewhere in the seven hundreds, and uh, by the end of the seven years, they were up to I want to say around eight twenty. Um, so in fact, the process of credit card churning, which by the way was the only debt or loans of any kind that we had in that period, the process of credit card churning by itself raised our credit scores by, I don't remember the exact number, but maybe a hundred points, something like that, um, each. So yeah, all the like propaganda that you hear that churning is like terrible for your score, don't do it. I feel like maybe that's like secretly put out there by the banks to discourage people from taking their money, um, because it, it really works. And for us, it actually raised our credit score. And based on talking to other people who have done this, they have the same story. It raises the credit score. And I think there's good reasons for that, right? Uh, if you think about what you have to do to be a credit card churner, you have to have a whole bunch of credit cards and be meticulous about making on-time payments on all of them for the full statement balance every single month, which usually, I mean, that sounds complicated, but usually just means turn on auto pay for every card. And, and then if you have a whole bunch, I mean, dozens per year of on-time payments going on your credit record, of course, that's going to be good for your credit score, right? So I think that kind of counterbalances the fact that you have these inquiries and these cancellations. You also have a higher credit limit because you have more cards, which means a lower overall utilization percentage. And so that boosts your credit score as well. So I think there's more to it uh, than people think. And uh, we, were, we were dead wrong. Our, we thought our credit scores would go down and they actually went up. Perfect. And a couple pieces I want to talk about there. One is the utilization where I've, I've heard of people having this situation where they would cancel a card and then their overall credit limit was lower. So their credit score actually went down, even though they got rid of like potential debt in the future, which, yeah, I mean, if you're not... It, it kind of doesn't make sense in some ways. And then the other part is I actually have a foreclosure from back in the day where it's really hard to get advice about going into a strategic default, which is what mine was. I chose to stop paying for this property. Big story, like th different story. We won't even get into it. But basically everyone was, was telling me your credit score will probably drop by like hundreds of points. It's a big big deal. But number one, I wasn't planning on borrowing money for the foreseeable future. And number two, because I didn't have any other debt and everything else was fine, my credit score dropped to, I think, like 720 or something like that, which is fine. Like it's pretty decent. And then it, I think over the course of a couple of years, it was back up in the like low 800s or so. So yeah, I Honestly, credit scores are, are, in my opinion, some of the dumbest numbers uh, in the world of personal finance to track. They, they don't make sense to me. They don't even really make sense to me from the lender's perspective, which is the person you know who's, who, who should be writing the rules for the credit score. It's like you said, I mean, if you cancel a credit card with no balance on it that you, you paid in full and on time, you know, why would that make your credit score go down because your credit utilization percentage went up? Well, it's because you, you canceled a line of credit. I mean, how does that really make sense? And it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but after seeing the results of churning and seeing that canceling cards really doesn't impact your score as much as you would think, I think maybe the banks also realize that that doesn't make that much sense. And they that those factors count less than other more important factors like how often did you pay on time? Oh, 100% of the time, 50 times a year? Uh, sounds good. Sounds like we want to extend more credit to you, right? And so I think those effects are, are a lot more powerful, at least in our experience. You mentioned downgrading a card. So there's some cards out there, like I have a, uh, a Chase Inc. card, and I think I have to pay like 100 bucks. There's some benefits and stuff like that. So is it around downgrading those, or can you elaborate what downgrading a card means? 
Sure. So uh, like I mentioned before, a lot of the cards with the highest sign up bonuses, which is like literally the only thing that you think about if you're a credit card churner, you ignore all the other benefits and the marketing that goes around the card. Like, oh, you get 1% on this and 2% on that and 3% on that. You don't care at all if you're a churner. You only care about one thing. How much are they going to give me when I sign up so I can just cancel right after that or downgrade or whatever? So the cards that have these high sign up bonuses typically have also high annual fees attached to them. But it's really popular um, to, again, entice people in because that's what the banks are all about is enticing people to draw them in so they can trap them. It's very popular to waive the annual fee for the first 12 months. So if you're a churner, that's actually like the perfect setup, right? Because you sign up, you meet the requirements, get your bonus, and then you cancel or downgrade the card, and then you never end up paying the annual fee. And, and what I mean by downgrade is this. So uh, canceling the card, obviously, you want to avoid if possible, because it at least has some negative impact on your credit score, even if it's not that bad. So what you can do is if you, you sign up for one of these high fee cards, just to get the bonus, you collect it, you call the credit card company up after, let's say, 11 months have passed when your annual fee is going to hit. And you say, hey, uh, I love this card. It's a great card. I want to keep it, but I don't want to pay this annual fee. So what can we do about that? And then the bank usually, I mean, I would say in 90% or more of cases will say, oh, well, this exact same card, uh, we have a different version, a lower tier version of the card. And we can downgrade you to that. And then you can keep the card and you won't pay any annual fee. And they'll tell you all these disadvantages of the lower fee card. They'll be like, well, you know, instead of 1.5% cash back on your purchases, you only are going to get 1% cash back on your purchases. You don't care about any of that because you're already done with the card as a churner. You've moved on to three other cards by now. Um, and so you're happy to downgrade to a no fee card. Let it just sit there. I mean, literally, we just have them rotting in our closet somewhere. The line of credit stays open, so it impacts your credit score less. And then you never pay an annual fee at any point during having that card. So that's basically what downgrading is. Okay, got it. Who is a good candidate for embarking on this journey? Uh, yeah, so that's actually really important. Um, the best candidate for embarking on credit card churning is someone who is very um, organized and meticulous about their finances and who generally keeps a surplus of cash on hand and isn't prone to going into debt or spending extra money. Um, so if any of that stuff applies to you, like if you're in a situation where you feel like you're at a beginner level with personal finance and you're trying to get your finances in order, uh, I would not recommend credit card churning at all as much as I love it because you're more likely to accidentally fall into that trap that the bank is setting for you. So you need to be someone who is 100% confident in yourself and your discipline that there's absolutely no chance that you will fall into that debt trap that's being set by the bank. Um, as long as you're confident in that and you know you're going to make your payments on time, avoid interest, know to downgrade at the right time or cancel at the right time, and you won't be sucked in by some other marketing that they throw at you, uh, then I would say uh, credit card churning is basically free money for you. So it, only you can kind of decide which one of those two people you are. Um, and there are responsible ways to use a credit card, even if you are more on the beginner level too. So we, maybe we can talk about that some as well. But, um, you know, churning is not for everybody. Okay. And one thing I'll point out too, I just did some quick and rough math. So we mentioned 20K over the course of seven years. So you're talking a little over 3,000 per year, which is you know significant. You can do some stuff with about 3K per year and then 40 cards over seven years. But you also mentioned you were working with essentially three different entities, you, Lauren, and the business. So when you uh, back that down, you're talking about maybe um, six cards. So maybe if someone was doing this on their own, maybe they would just do like two cards per year or something like that. Is that sort of reasonable? Is that what you would expect if it was just an individual doing this? Yeah. The, the math you laid out makes sense. I think, I think, uh, two or three cards a year for one individual person without a business entity is probably like a reasonable place to go if you want to be a churner. 
And that's not too bad when I think about having a stack of 40 cards, that can get complicated. But if you're just doing one or two at a time, not a huge deal, you can stay on top of that. So you alluded to a few areas here and I want to get into sort of like pros and cons and mistakes. So you touched on a few, but I'll just leave it open for you. And you can mention specifically pros and cons and areas that people screw up on. Yeah. Uh, well, the biggest screw up that you can possibly make is to not pay the balance of your credit cards in full every single month. Because uh, if you if you pay any less than the full balance in any given month along the way, uh, then you're going to be nailed with very high interest. And again, these high bonus cards are actually some of the ones with the highest interest rates. So even with us having pretty good credit along the way, uh, our interest rates were, I want to say, somewhere like the average interest rate was probably like 20 to 22 percent per year interest. But of course, we never paid a single penny in interest. So uh, absolutely make sure that you're dedicated to not, not paying interest. Um, make sure you just set a reminder for yourself. It's literally as easy as just put it in your phone um, for the appropriate date to either cancel or downgrade each card after 11 months if it has an annual fee. And I say 11 months because that's as long as you can wait uh, without hitting your first annual fee on most cards. Um, And then uh, you mentioned organization. Uh, You also mentioned the math of like, okay, $3,000 a year is what you're making, you know, for a married couple doing this. Uh, true. So uh, I'll mention that, uh, the headache or the organization that goes into it, you know, I think a lot of people hear our story and they're like, that's kind of a joke. Like you made $3,000 a year for all this crazy effort that you had to put in juggling 40 credit cards. And it's so hard. Um, and it, I, I, I admit it sounds like it's difficult. It's actually not at all. So like, just to kind of like, give you the process of what signing up for a credit card and churning it looks like. You basically fill out an online application, which takes about three to five minutes, generally. Uh, They mail you the card, right? Um, And then you activate the card, which takes about one minute. Uh, And then you set up uh, auto pay for the full statement balance as soon as you set up the card. That's going to take you about two to three more minutes. And then you just charge all of your normal everyday living expenses on that card only until you've hit the minimum spending requirement that they uh, require for the bonus. And then after that, you stop using that card. You go on to the next one. You put it in your closet and you set one reminder in your phone to cancel or downgrade the card at month 11. So if you're making $500 on a signup bonus, uh, the total time investment there is a, about an hour or less. I'd say an hour is being very liberal with the amount of time. So you're making $500 an hour is the way to think of it. I mean, we really didn't spend more than a few hours per year thinking about credit card churning. It's just that easy. Um, so I would say one of the mistakes people make is overestimating how difficult it's going to be and then not doing it just for that reason, uh, which I would say is a definite mistake. It's totally worth it. By the way, that money you make is tax free as well. Oh wow! And does it show up like as a credit on your uh, statement? Yeah, so you can get the money a few different ways. Um, so the best cards pay you cash. They say "quote unquote" cash. Obviously, they're not handing you bills, right? So you can either get a statement credit um, against your purchases on the card which is same as cash. It's just erasing your regular everyday expenses that that you are paying for. Or you can get it deposited in your your checking account. Or you can get a check mailed to you sometimes. Um, And then the worst way, we did this sometimes, but uh, the worst way is to sign up for cards that offer you other benefits other than cash. Like, for example, free hotel rooms, free uh, airline flights, Uh, Those are like the two most common ones, but there's other ones too, gift cards and things like that. So the problem with those programs, right, the reason they're not as good is that people have a tendency to kind of overvalue what they're getting. Like uh, when we redeem for free hotels, you know, sometimes these hotels are like really fancy hotels that we wouldn't have stayed in if we didn't have these points. And so like, are we really, if we stay in a $200 a night hotel and we usually stay in $100 a night hotels, are we really getting, you know, $200 cash worth of value out of that? 
I'd say no, absolutely not. Um, so you will tend to be like more disciplined about it if you uh, go for those cash cards. Um, but we definitely did a few of those travel cards because we like to travel and got some free flights and hotels and stuff too. Okay. That's a great point. I know, I think when you were over at the house, you mentioned something like just get the cash back in most cases because the other point values and you have to convert maybe to other programs and stuff like you lose some value in the conversion or you just overvalue whatever the thing you're redeeming is so good point yeah people always like to tell me you know because we're into credit card training they tell us like oh i i just stayed at you know the ritz carlton for free it was free because of credit cards and you know I'm like happy for them, excited for them that they like reap some benefit from this, this credit card training thing. But like the real question though is like, how much cash did you give up by staying at the Ritz Carlton? Because if you just got a card that paid you cash instead, you know, you might have redeemed for a $500 night at a Ritz Carlton, but you could have, let's say, gotten $400 cash instead from a different card for the same thing. Which one's better? $400 cash? or one night at the Ritz Carlton that is has a retail value of $500, right? So it's all in the marketing. I mean, all this stuff with with these big banks, like they've worked it out where they are manipulating you psychologically into getting the least benefit and the most negative effects that line their pockets possible. So you just have to not fall into those traps. A- anytime you read the marketing from the bank and you're like, yeah, I believe that, question everything, right? That's right. like the line. Yeah, it's tough. It is tough. So one other area that you mentioned is like minimum spending amounts. So I haven't done this, but you're you're kind of convincing me that I at least need to do a couple uh, churns per year. Yeah, I, I spend a decent amount like with my business and stuff. So I can't remember. I th- I probably needed to spend a few thousand bucks over the course of maybe three months. I can't remember the li- the amount. I think it could have been like 5,000 over three months or something, which was fine. I knew my burn rate. So I knew I was going to be able to spend that. But um, what what are some common amounts that you need to charge or to get the bonus that you're talking about? Uh, good question. I, I mean, it, it varies like wildly from card to card. Um, and it's kind of an interesting like analysis to do about it too. So like, for example, um, I've seen some cards where like I think Chase Freedom, for example, for a while, I, I haven't looked at their offer in a little bit, but for a while their standard offer was you need to spend $500 in three months and then we'll give you $200 cash in exchange for that. And so you look at that and you're like, okay, $200 on a 500 spend, that's 40% cash back effective, right? Which is like, wow, that's incredible, like 40% cash back. But the thing is, uh, you can only sign up for so many of these cards per unit time, like per year or whatever, before the banks like kind of catch on to your deal and and they kind of throttle you a little bit and you start getting rejections. So really, more important than the percent return uh, is just the literal like top line total amount that they are giving you for signing up for the card. So like a card that gives me $500 on 3000 in spending. I'd rather take that card, even though it's a much lower percent return, than to take uh, $200 on 500 in spending because it represents a hard credit inquiry and I only get to do so many of those before I start getting rejected. So you want to go for the highest dollar amount on cards. And I'd say 500 cash back on 3000 in spending is like a pretty like a baseline for comparison, like a standard offer if you want to kind of compare offers to that. Um, and once you do the first few like juiciest offers that are the biggest amounts, and I have seen them, by the way, go as high as a thousand or twelve hundred cash just for signing up. Those do exist out there. Um, they're usually limited time offers. But once you've identified what the most juicy best ones are, uh, you're going to find that you sign up for three, four, five, six cards, and then you're whittling your way down to like crappier and crappier bonuses. And that's fine. Because again, uh, when you start with those high level bonuses, you're getting paid 500 or or $1,000 an hour tax-free for your time. Um, 
And then you get down to those lower cards and you're like, oh, I'm only making $300 an hour now. Like, no, that's still amazing money tax free. Just keep doing it. Like it, it still really is worth it. But uh, but yeah, I would say look for the top line amount that they're giving you um, net of any annual fees that they charge you in the first year, because those you really do have to pay if they charge them immediately. Um, and yeah, I'd say 500 back on 3000 spent is like a pretty standard offer. Okay. Do y'all still do this right now? Yeah. Um, let's see. What's the last card we did? Uh, I think so. Recently, we for sure did the Chase Sapphire Preferred again, um, which is a card that that's actually our favorite card to start f- someone on turning with if they have a good credit score. So if you have strong credit, I'd say on average, the Chase Sapphire Preferred has the best churning stats of any card out there. Um, but a uh, little known fact about it, if you cancel it and you wait 48 months, in other words, four years after cancellation, actually, I'm not sure if it's after cancellation or after the date you received your bonus. It's one of those two things. But if you wait four years, you can sign up for that same card again and get the full bonus again. So we, we did that one again recently. I can't remember if that was the third time we did it or the second time around that we did it because we're actually at a point now where it could have been the third. I, I don't remember. I'd have to look back at the documentation. Um, and there was one. The last one we did wasn't that one. That was the one before last. Can't remember the last one we did. But yeah, we're still doing it. <laughs> okay. And I'm sure there's uh, probably like some Reddit threads or some other areas where people keep track and they're like, okay, Chase Sapphire is 48 months. This other company is X number of months. So there's some uh, places people could look this stuff up, right? Yeah. um, There is a Reddit community that's called churning. I think it's literally just called churning. Um, And there's lots of information there. Uh, I will caution this. Um, people who get really into churning and I know like anyone listening probably thinks that I am really into churning, but I'm not, uh, people who get really into churning, I think spend so much time thinking about how to optimize every little piece of it and like squeeze out every dollar possible that the total like rate of pay that they're getting like that $500 an hour is probably like sinking down to like a hundred or fifty dollars an hour because they're spending so much time thinking about it. So uh, I will tell you that yes, there are resources out there and they're they're good, but I actually never made use of any of them. Um, I, I, Lauren and I both like our strategy was this: it was every day we go get our mail out of the mailbox, and there's you know five different credit card offers in there practically every day. Right on the front page of these offers, it tells you the sign-up bonus. If there's no sign-up bonus on the out, I'm talking the outside of the envelope. Like we don't even open the envelope. On the outside of the envelope, it'll tell you the sign-up bonus. If it doesn't list the sign-up bonus on the outside of the envelope, there is none. Throw it in the trash. Like don't even open the envelope. There is none. And if it's one or two hundred dollars, probably just throw it in the trash. It's probably not going to be worth it unless you're like down to those dregs of the worst credit card offers. And if you got yourself a $500 signup bonus, then throw that one in the do it pile and just do that one. Uh, It's really that simple. Um, For someone who's starting out, I could probably tell you the first like two or three cards you might look at. Um, Chase Sapphire Preferred is the one to start with for sure. Uh, if you have a business, uh, the Capital One Spark business card very frequently will have a really good sign-up bonus, like five hundred or seven hundred dollars. The Chase Inc. Uh, for business as well usually will have like five or seven hundred dollar uh, cash bonus for signing up. So again, if you have a business, those are really good ones. Uh, for personal, I remember that the Barclay card Arrival Plus World Elite MasterCard, which is the most ridiculous name for a credit card I've ever heard in my life, had a really cool uh, bonus offer. Uh, not sure if it's still around, but it was it probably is. It was $500, I think. Uh, and instead of cash, they gave you travel credit. But the way the travel credit worked was where you could literally charge any travel expense anywhere you want on the credit card and then just they would reimburse you cash for the travel charge. 
So instead of being locked into some expensive hotel brand like Ritz Carlton or Marriott or whatever, you could just shop for the cheapest hotel or Airbnb or whatever, and then they'll reimburse you cash for it. So that's like almost as good as cash. That one's really good. And there's another travel card that does that as well. Capital One Venture does the exact same thing as that. So I think that's a pretty good deal. And I think they usually are offering around 500 bucks or so. Um, so yeah, those are all like really good ones to look at to start with. But other than that, just sort through your junk mail. And like, I know this is counterintuitive, but like look at ads on websites. Like if there's an ad for a credit card, like a banner ad, you usually ignore those. But like if there's a credit card ad, I look at it, I will click the ad and sign up for the credit card because I'm just taking their money, right? So right. It, it's really weird and counterintuitive. This is amazing. So before we switch gears and talk about sort of the meta situation about credit card churning, which I'll provide context for people in a second, is there anything else you want to add about credit card churning? You gave suggestions, pros, cons, and anything else we missed before we move on? I think uh, I think we cover the basics. I'll just reiterate one more time: pay off your bill in full every month. If you do that, you just can't mess up. I, I mean, that's the most important thing. Perfect. Before we started recording, I took a look at a blog post where you document this stuff, Stephen. So we'll provide a link so people could check it out. And I was like, you know what? I, I know there's affiliate programs for credit cards, and I was like, ah, maybe I want to get in on that. And we had a little discussion and we won't mention the media outlet that you were on uh, sometime in the past, but you actually mentioned credit card churning and they were like, hey, we're not going to talk about credit card churning. And I don't know if they mentioned why, but I'll let you, you know, sort of talk about it. And I asked you, Stephen, hey, is this an affiliate link in your in your post here, uh, can I sign up for the affiliate program? Like, is it easy to do? And then you gave me some context around this. We're being very careful to not mention or throw any of our friends under the bus, but you you can just talk about it a little bit as much as you want to share. And we can have a little dialogue about the finance industry in general. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a weird world. Uh, I, I mean, I think affiliate marketing in general is like, is a weird world. Um, and you, you get led down these like ethical dilemma rabbit holes with affiliate marketing. And so with credit cards, I think it's, uh, like especially prevalent. Um, so basically what I have heard repeated from other content creators and what I've experienced and, and Lauren has experienced herself as well, trying to negotiate like an affiliate deal, um, with, with a company that connects content creators with credit card companies to so that when people sign up for a credit card through our link, we'll get paid a commission for referring them to that credit card. Well, uh, in general, the rule that I've heard is that if you mention the word churning or you describe what churning is in any way in your content, you will be banned from your affiliate program or you will not be accepted into the affiliate program in the first place. And so Lauren and I actually uh, did try to negotiate um, an affiliate relationship for credit cards because why not, right? I mean, free money, we're talking about it anyway. Um, and yeah, they, they, the company we dealt with actually told us straightforwardly, uh, we'd love to have a relationship with you. Uh, your blog qualifies for all our requirements and stuff, but uh, you have to remove this article from your website. And they, it was our turning article about how to do all this stuff. Um, and to me, I mean, our churning article is basically teaching people how to not get trapped in mountains of 22% APR debt, uh, while they're messing around with this credit card stuff. And so if we were to refer people to sign up for credit cards without providing them with that information, we're just trapping people in 22% APR debt ourselves. I mean, that there, there's nothing more to it than that. So uh, yeah, we just said no to the offer. And so at this time, we don't have any uh, credit card affiliate links on our website. Uh, there are a couple cards where if you have a card yourself personally, um, you can refer a friend, right? Like it's meant for you to like post it on Facebook and like get your, you know, your mom to sign up for it or whatever. So we have a few of those links on our website. Uh, they're very, very limited in terms of what you'd expect out of an affiliate partnership. Uh, most of them are limited to like 
five or 10 signups per year and then they cap you and you can't make any more money. Um, so it's not really a proper affiliate relationship, but they don't vet those at all. They just let anybody who has the card, you know, sign up for them. So that's a good, like, I guess more like ethical, at least in our terms option for, for affiliate linking. It just won't make you rich. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. If you Google around a bit, you'll see that uh, most outlets are scared to death to talk about churning. Um, and people who do talk about churning, I think don't talk about it as cavalierly as maybe I do. Like, yeah, sign up for the card, get the bonus and cancel the credit card and leave. Like no one will say that. And, and it's because of the fact that they cannot have uh, this revenue source if they say anything about it. Yeah, it's very like uh Freakonomics, you know, uh, the, the book Freakonomics and well, there's a whole, there's a whole brand around it, but you know, look at the incentives and then you, you figure out like why certain things are done. Like, why don't we hear more about credit card churning? It's because the media outlets are earning money from it. So you're only going to find it from people who don't need the money or they've made like an ethical decision or, or both. And you're like, Hey, we're just going to put the information out, out there. So, and uh, very interesting. And it makes me want to talk about it more. Now, one luxurious thing, I, I have like multiple areas that I talk about things. So in the future, you might find on my other podcast that we like recommend a credit card or something, but we'll, um, you know, we could, I have other places I could talk to provide the real information like this, <laughs> this podcast and this YouTube channel. So yeah, I think about it and I'm like, ah, you know, if I want to hire a producer on the other podcast, maybe we have to make some money somehow. I sure would like to do it in some other way, but I mean, if we recommend a credit card, like I could imagine, um, you know, tiptoeing around the lines and, Maybe they can connect the dots, but I have so much content out there. It's not like they're going to listen to like 300 fucking episodes of this. So no, for sure. And I mean, look, I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus either about it. Like ultimately at the end of the day, right? Everyone is individually responsible for their own decisions. So if you have millions of credit card referral links on your website and you don't say anything about how to, you know, game the system, basically, well, if, if people sign up for those cards and get trapped in debt, like, at the end of the day, it's their fault that they did that, right? But, right. Uh, you know, for us, we started our website with a purpose of, like, financial education. Like, that's the whole point of the site. So, like, why would we go backward on that to do this, like, ancillary benefit of making a little extra money with the site? That really isn't the reason we started in the first place. So, that was kind of more where our decision came from. Got it. Very cool. And I'm curious, like, it's a great headline that you guys have, which you, you told me, Steven, I'm, I'm allowed to use that same headline, <laughs> but it's kind of a headline where I would almost expect other outlets to pick it up. And I suspect other outlets like weren't super interested, but I bet on social media, it was shared around quite a bit. Do you have any context to add around that? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. So the, the headline of our article, I mean, you, you, you nailed it. Uh, the headline of our article is we signed up for 40 credit cards and made $20,000 doing it, right? So, which is like the clickbaitiest headline possibly imaginable. But if you want anyone to read your blog or hear what you have to say, you, you got to have the clickbait. You have to have the clickbait. So uh, it worked pretty well um, on social media. Uh, people shared the crap out of it. And uh, it also generates tons of controversy. Because, you know, uh, the standard thing on social media is read the headline, write a comment. Like, don't read the article, just read the headline, write a comment. And so uh, those types of people, right, the like quick, angry, react people are like the first to jump on this headline because we signed up for 40 credit cards to any sane person just sounds like a, a crazy, financially irresponsible, reckless decision. And people just can't wait to tear us a new one to tell me how we're going to be swimming in debt and we're making this horrible choice and our credit score is going to go to 300 and <laughs> all, all this crazy. I don't think your credit score even can go to 300. I think that's below the minimum. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, so so it really it really gets people riled up. Um, it's, it's one of our most viral things on social media, but it did not get picked up by any media outlets. We did actually pitch it to a few, um, media outlets 
and they just didn't really have interest in it. And we've had success with some of our other like clickbaity stuff before. And maybe, maybe it has to do with affiliate relationships with credit card companies. I really have no idea. I can't speculate. Maybe it's that the people reading uh, this thought themselves that it was financially reckless and they're going to get sued for recommending this horrible strategy that will ruin your credit. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but people are afraid to touch it media-wise. Yeah, they don't want to talk about that. And I was just thinking of the viral component where people read the headline and comment without reading it, which makes it even more viral because they're interacting with the piece of content. So, oh so yeah, I didn't say that explicitly, but it's yeah. great for us when people are angry. I, I mean, it just makes your content go crazy viral. Very cool. All right. Well, Stephen, any anything else before we wrap it up? Uh, I would say, uh, like, if you're interested in learning more about churning, or if you think churning is crazy, we like we have resources for both of those people. So uh, I mentioned the article on our website is we signed up for 40 credit cards and made $20,000 doing it, it'll take you step by step how to do it. And if you if you decide this isn't for you, um, you fall into the camp of like, maybe you're more getting started with your finances, you're just learning, you don't have established credit, stuff like that. Uh, we have stuff for you as well. So we have this other article called the autopilot guide to credit cards. Um, so definitely like check that out. Uh, we're not all about just like crazy churning stuff. Most of our finance content is very like mild mannered and stuff, but, but people like to hear about the churning cause it's fun and it's a interesting little side hustle to make extra money. That's all it is though. Awesome. Well, we'll put a link for both of those uh, posts on Trip of a Lifestyle. And where else can people find you and Lauren? Uh, yeah, our, our blog is just tripofalifestyle.com. Uh, there's lots of personal finance and travel stuff on there, like frugal travel stuff. Um, and then on social media, we're Trip of a Lifestyle on like every platform, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, YouTube, except Twitter has a character limit on it. So on Twitter, we are TOA Lifestyle. Cool. We'll put links for everything as well as the previous episode that you and Lauren were on. So thanks a lot, Stephen. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Doug.